Hello students, today we will begin with the third continuation of the chapter cell structure and functions. As previously I told you about what is cell, number of cell, shape, size etcetera. In this video I will be telling you about little bit multicellular and unicellular. Multicellular organisms which can perform their own functions with different multiple number of cells in the body. Whereas, the unicellular organisms, for example, as you can see, paramecium and amoeba, they have only one cell in them. These organisms do all the functions and all the needed things for survival with only a single cell, a particular cell. Uni means one, cellular means cell, unicell, single cell. A single cell organisms like amoeba captures and digests food, respires, excretes, grows and reproduces, all the functions are being done by a single cell. They include both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes. Next, a white blood cell is an example of exception. That means, it is a single cell in a multicellular organism in human beings, especially I am talking about, it is WBC which can change its shape and it is able to fight against the diseases. Generally, we see the different types of cells. Some are round, spherical, elongated, some are long and pointed at both the ends and some exhibits spindle shape, etc. Even sometimes we can just, you can see the nerve cell that is quite long with a cell body on it. The nerve cell receives and transfers messages thereby helping to control and coordinate the working of different parts of the body. You can see in the picture different types of human cells. Even in NCRT book figure 8.4 the types of different types of cells are given there. Next topic is your we will study about the size of the cell. Do it affects an organism? If the size of the cell is smaller or larger, no, it does not because all the living organisms are made up of cells. Be it can be small as millions of meters, micrometers or microns or it can be microscopic in size, whatever so might be. All the cells are viewed under this my very minute and very small even can be enlarged or magnified by a microscope. The smallest cell is about 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 micrometer in which is present in bacteria and the largest cell which is measuring about 170 millimeter to 130 millimeter that is an egg of an ostrich. There is an activity in the NCRT book 8.2. Boil a hen's egg, remove the shell of it and what do you observe? Okay. This you have already studied in class 7 or 6 might be that yellow part which we can see covered by a white material that is called as albumin. The yellow part is called as albumin okay, which solidifies while boiling. The yellow part is the yolk which it is a part of a single cell and you can observe this single cell without any magnifying device also. Now, the size has no relation with the size of the body of an animal or a plant because it is not necessary the cells um, in a plant uh, means in an elephant in an elephant or uh, is bigger whereas in a rabbit or a rat it is a smaller. No, the size of the cell is related to the functions. For example, the nerve cell is present both in elephant as well as in rat and both are long also branched also as you can see as you have seen already in the pictures okay they perform the same function that transferring of messages now we will study about cell structure and functions these are the two diagrams of plant cell and animal cell you have learned in the previous class 7 about the digestive organs okay which togetherly constituting mixing up combining together and forming a digestive system and each organ in the system performs different functions and what are the functions 
which you have already studied digestion assimilation absorption etc similarly the organs of a plant also perform specific functions for example root for absorption of water and minerals leaves for preparing the food all are responsible for different work each organ is further made up of smaller parts called tissues and a tissue is a group of similar cells performing a specific functions so we will study the different parts of the cell let's begin with the first one that is your cell membrane it is the basic component of a cell which is closing or making a wrapping around the cover of the cell and it is porous in nature the cell membrane separates the cell from one another and also internal contents from the surrounding medium it is porous means having pores in it and allows the movement of substances or materials both inwards and outwards next is your in addition to the cell membrane only in plant cells is your cell wall it is a hard rigid covering that is addition covering to the wall of the cell membrane it gives shape and turgidity to the cell it gives rigid structure to the plant cell and that is why they can withstand the stress of high velocity wind rain pressure etc next we will study about the cytoplasm cyto means cell plasma means gel like structure it is a jelly like substance present between the cell membrane and the nucleus various other components or organelles of the cells present within the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm they are floating around other organelles next we will study about the nucleus it is generally spherical and located in the center of the cell the nucleus is separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane called the nuclear membrane it uses the information in the chromosomes to divide to, to, to sorry to decide that what each organelle should do and function of the cell and the nucleus contains an even smaller concentrated materials that is called as nucleolus you can see the picture over there it's given there next nucleus are just like thread like structures which contains chromosomes and these chromosomes these carry genes which help in the inheritance or transfer of characters from one parents to the offsprings the chromosomes can be seen only when the cell divides there is a topic at the last in this chapter cell division we will talk about it now what is gene it is a unit of inheritance in living organism it controls the transfer of hereditary characteristic from parents to the offspring this means what your parents pass some of their characters on to you if your father has brown eyes or grayish eyes you may have the brown or grayish eyes if your mother is having curly hair or straight hair you might also end up having curly hair or straight hair however the different combinations of genes from one parents results in different characteristics you can see in the picture all thing is given very clearly and this dna the genes contains the dna okay these g dna molecules contains the information necessary for constructing of an organizing cell in the next video we will study about the next topics and other organelles thank you